previously on board. Hey, Trader, who got it? No, it's going very well. Good uh, still. Yeah, it's only a few weeks ago we saw you. Yeah, in a rush. In a rush. And uh, we uh, called you in a rush today when James uh, couldn't make it this afternoon at the last minute. So thanks a lot for stepping into the breach. It's always nice to, to catch up with you. Not a lot of rugby to talk about, really. I think the whole Curry Cup uh, thing has now been spoken about at length. It seems like mm. years ago we spoke to half the Western Province team the day after they, or two days after they won the Cup. Uh, but uh, were you surprised? Was there, uh, was there a biggie, um, yeah, a stalk? Heartbroken more. No, um, that was the week before. No, I never wanted Province to win. Yeah. I thought <laughs> 100 years like, without a cup would have been good. Spoken like a true bull. <laughs> no, my in-laws are Western Province supporters, and they always celebrate the cup about three weeks before the final. Yeah. Yeah, well, you have so. to. <laughs> and then a day after yeah. the fi- day yeah. after the semis, normally going next year. Yes, yes, next year, yes, yeah. Exactly. Well, next year has finally arrived. Yeah, no, unfortunately. But okay, yeah. We'll give them the opportunity. I think they were happy or lucky to get past the Lions in the semi-final. Yeah, I mean, just, just snuck in there. Yeah. But no, it's a good team. I think the forwards just bullied the, the Sharks off the ball. But the, aren't you surprised about that? Because everyone's saying, I mean, the Sharks yeah. forwards, the pack will dominate them. Exactly. And with Plumtree, a coach that always tells the forwards to bully the opposition. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think they thought that they'll just pitch up on the day and they'll win the game. That's something we've been saying to a lot of people uh, that we've been speaking to about this is that it's not the first time that this has happened to them. I mean, yeah. sides, sides go to Griquas and they think they can just pitch up and win the game and get a shock. Sides that do that time and time again, I think the Sharks might have done that last year against the Lions oh. as well. You know, you eventually learn that there is no game that you can just pitch up and go and win. You know, even, you know, even now and again, the Falcon might have caused a few problems yeah. with a team or two. <laughs> but, I mean, with this six-team Curry Cup, there is no game you can just do yeah. that. And there's a lot of mental, mental attitude as well, I think. And it can swing in ten minutes, you know. Yeah. I, I actually thought five minutes in the game, I said to one of the guys, that Sharks aren't bullying enough. And I think the problem just felt that. And I thought, well, okay, we can win this game. And if you don't pull it in, in that ten minutes, it's gone. So... That's one of the points that was made as well. When the Sharks were building up that lead and they were 12-3 up, it was a chance, as they say in boxing terms, yeah. the killer instinct. They had a chance then to kill off that game. You know, yeah. you, and I was sitting there watching the game, right, they just need to score one try. Robins are playing catch-up rugby. They haven't really had the ability to yeah. do that if they're now having to make up 10 or more points. Um, but as, 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 was, as was pointed out by a few people, and you said as well, they didn't put in that killer, that yeah. killer punch, and yeah, that's what cost them. Definitely, and I think um, just the youngsters showed, you know, the province forwards that how good a flyers can look behind a, a good pack. Yeah. And um, yeah, now everyone thinks of Katrakilas as a potential Springbok or something, but just because the forwards did their job on the day. Mm. And meanwhile, he's playing first division rugby next year <laughs> <laughs> for the Kings. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's playing super rugby. Yeah. He's going to play super rugby as well. Yeah. And oh, then he will. And then go down to um, first division. Yeah. And then we'll never see him again. <laughs> I wonder what he's thinking right now. Like, yeah. Mm. What did I do? <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, okay, so the season over, and uh, we go into the end of year tour. We've also been asking a lot of guys about how do they see, and, and you did a few end of year tours, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> After, but our season, season wasn't as, what, are you being facetious about that? Or are you saying it really is exciting? No, I enjoyed, I always enjoyed touring. Yeah. And um, end of the year, not much pressure. You know, you're going to win. Maybe only England that's going to be a big threat. So. Well, it, it, sometimes it happened where Scotland have beaten us and we've come short a couple of times against Ireland. Yeah. And that's the thing. There's maybe a lot more rugby now than when you were playing, Craner. Yeah, maybe. You know, so, so you yeah. were maybe a little fresher now. But these guys that are going week in and week out, John de Villiers, perfect example, you know, has to get dragged into the semi-final for his side because they're so desperate. He's had no break. These guys are, are, some of these guys are absolutely buggered by the time they get to this tour. I don't know how many games they play now. I think I remember Mark Andrews played 34 or 36 games one season. Mm. So I can't see that they really play more than that. But I just think the media has got a big influence on players now. And, and the media says the players are young and they get injured and they say they need rest. So it's almost, I remember when I was playing for the Bulls as well, we went across when the Super 10 or Super 12 started, then the media always said, but you can understand why they lose because it's a difficult tour and it's a long flight and they and the balls get homesick and yeah, all that you know, stuff all those yeah. are, and, and then the players you know you so go you, start game believe, and you start believing it yeah and you think oh well we can lose but you know so it's, it's okay everyone knows we're struggling so it's, it's not that bad yeah. and actually you know, I thought I saw some of the teams that um, started winning now they got that winning culture back but I also think that the media is pushing that that tiredness and the players need to rest and you know it's difficult and you know, I, I don't know 
But I mean, when John says that he was he's out on his feet, I mean, I mean, you've spoken to Bismarck and Pierre, some of the oh. guys that are injured. I mean, when you were injured, uh, when you played, yeah. you, know, you couldn't wait to get back on the field. These guys are now saying it's actually a, a, it's actually a blessing in disguise because they at least get a chance, you know, to rest and relax and just take it easy for a while. Yeah, I won't be too hard on the players, but um, you know, we went in games that you, you you didn't even do a captain's practice on the Thursday because you played on the Saturday, or you, and then you would play that Saturday. Yeah. You know, and I, I I don't read a lot, but I just read Andre Gassi's um, autobiography as well, and he said that you know they helped him in the car on the night before a final. You know, mm. he couldn't walk to the car, and then the next day he plays in the final. Yeah. So, I think you're always injured when you play sport, but I just think the players now I. I was at a guy's house the other day and his daughter was dating rugby players and, and his father asked him, Silly girl. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but the father asked, are you going to play um, on Saturday? Ask the boy. He asked the daughter. Uh, uh, he asked the boy <laughs> if he's going to play. And he said, no, he's just waiting. The doctor said he's A, 4, C. For, uh, he he caught this injury exactly to the medical terms. And um, yes, I just thought then that you know, players, doctors must just shut up a bit you know, yeah. and let the guys just play. You know. And I saw with the Falcons as well when we were there. You know, you ask the players if he's ready to play, and he says, "No, he'll wait for the doctor's response." You know, and so you know his mind's not yeah, actually yeah, yeah. in it or his so heart at that and time. I remember Ruben Kruger. He never went to a physio. He yeah. said, "If he's so sore that he needs a physio, then he's out." Yeah. You know? And funny enough, I mean, Bismarck is one of those guys where it doesn't matter what's wrong with him; he wants to carry on playing. Yeah. You know, so it's mind you, Bismarck didn't really. Bismarck did say he's very frustrated and wants to get back in and yeah. he's training again now. I think so. everyone wants to play. Yeah. But I think it just. I don't know, the medical teams play a big role now and they want to prolong the players' lives. Yeah. So, I don't know, it's a fine line. You see, I mean, do you see it getting to a two-team two system for each, each franchise and for each side with the amount of rugby now? Because that's the way it seems to be going, where coaches are saying, I actually need two squads to be able to maintain through a whole season. Yeah, I think um, I always said that you need a Northern and a Southern Hemisphere team. I, um, with the Northern Hemisphere rugby slower and a big um, focus on the on the set phases and the scrums, and, uh, and somebody like Willem Alberts, I always saw him as a, as a Northern Hemisphere player. In the wet field, he can get over the advantage line, and uh, Gil Aplon will obviously or typically fall away in, in the Northern Hemisphere game. So, um, yeah, no, I think they just need to manage the squad better. But also, um, in saying that, I saw Mornaistein on the. I think it was a 2009 tour, end of the year, where he was switched with Lambie a couple of times. Mm. And, and uh, um, for Rita Prea not playing. You know, since then he's, he's struggling in his game. Yeah. And, and also players lose confidence. And I think you can say what you want. If the coach starts replacing you or giving you a rest and let another player play, mm. you know, it plays, uh, plays a role and, and you lose confidence in yourself. Yeah. I think it was 2010 to I think Lambie was still in standard three. Yeah. 2009. So yeah, he wasn't uh, allowed out after hours. Is that his, that his milk teeth? <laughs> yeah, he wasn't allowed out. Mom said yeah, he yeah. All right. Uh, the squad that's been chosen, and you mentioned players that suit those conditions. Um, we spoke to Henneke this week, and I looked at that squad, and I, I actually felt very comfortable with it from the point of view of I want to see how some of these guys look in a Springbok setup. So results secondary for me, yeah. um, but for me, I want to see what we've got coming through that you can add to the guys coming back and to our core squad. And who was saying it yesterday that your, your, biggest, your biggest challenges in rugby for the Springboks are your um, Tri-Nations or Championship Games and then the World Cup. Yeah. Those are the things that we must be most concerned about or perturbed about if we don't perform there. Yes, yeah. So this is, I mean, this is an ideal opportunity to have a look at Raymond Rule, um, Lionel Mupu, um, Franco van der Merwe, these new, new guys players, that have come yes. in. And then to add them to what's coming back next year and our core of our side. Yeah, I think Heineke, I've got a lot of respect for him. I think he's one of the best coaches around. I mean, I feel sorry for him. He didn't get a, he didn't inherit a team yeah. that can go to the next World Cup or can play. So he starts fresh and, and he's been dealt a couple of tough blows with injuries. So, um, yeah, I, I enjoy seeing other guys um, getting opportunities. Um, I think he really needed a, a core to carry the team forward, and that's um, that's where they're lacking now. So he needs that consistency. Um, but yeah, I think there's a lot of young players that come through. I think Marcel could see us, you know, just by giving a, a youngster a chance, you know, can show what he can do. And, and there's a lot of players like that. And I think that's one thing where Heineke isn't afraid to experiment with with new players. I mean, and also including the Northern Hemisphere teams or the 
or the players that, that, that plays, those yeah, guys, those yeah. guys. It just shows that you know he's looking outside of the box and and he wants to get the best team. And I've always believed that some players look good in a Curry Cup team, but he struggles in a Springbok team or the other way around. And you just get players that that don't look that good in a in a Curry Cup team or provincial team, but when you put him in a Springbok team, he excels and yeah. he becomes a great Springbok. But like you were saying, you kind of have to feel sorry for Haneke, especially if you go overseas and he wants to experiment with players and it backfires on him and we lose. Yeah. And so now we lose two out of three and we scrape home in the last one. Then all of a sudden the media is on your back again. But when you're trying to try out you know, different combinations and potential players in different positions and, it, and like I said, it doesn't work, then you take that risk as well. Yeah, for sure. I think um, when Haneke became the Bulls coach, I think the first two or three years he, he lost... Every game, or almost every game, yeah. and it takes it t- takes time. And I, uh, I'm I'm feeling sorry for a Springbok coach. There's never <laughs> never have time on your side. But they signed for four years, so they're not going to get rid of them. So they might just as well. Everyone, the public, must just start supporting them. Yeah, it's it difficult. Honest, yeah. Give it a yeah, chance. And and things are going to happen. I I, uh, I saw what Heineke did at the Bulls, and uh, four years is is a minimum he's got. But I, I believe that he can maybe go another term after Absolutely. that. Well, I think what New Zealand did with uh, Graham Henry was exactly that. I mean, the 2007 World Cup, uh, people were calling for his head, get rid of him. Yeah. He's a bad selector. He's not doing this right. They criticized his team selections and who he put in there. And uh, luckily, there were some wise heads in New Zealand that said, no, we always do it after World Cups because we keep losing them. <laughs> we always change our coach. We start yeah. again and we dominate two years later and then we lose a World Cup again. We're staying with this guy. He's got a core of a side. Let's, um, let's, let's build yeah. up to the next one and look what happened. Yeah, and I felt sorry for Inaka. I think that the first game against Australia in Australia, you know, they had pressure. He didn't even lose one, one game. Drew two, but uh, he was under pressure to perform yeah. you know, before even losing his first test. But sometimes I feel like the, ne- the media in this country, there's a knee-jerk reaction. Yeah. So people don't take time to think about what's actually going on. It's just the fact that we lost. Yeah. And it's panic station. But it's we- sensational if you don't succeed. So, yeah. You know. But it's a story. So we yeah. must, you know, we must take the negative and we must get as much mileage out of it as possible. Well, there are some journos as well. I mean, and, and you'll know from your day that have um, an affinity towards a certain coach anyway. So you can see immediately that Heineken has got some people that don't like him, haven't liked him for a long time, and they will always push that agenda. They'll never change their tune. So um, and that exists to the day still. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I think there's a, uh, you know, typically the English speaking or the more out of the box typical coaches or commentators, they would like a, a coach on that level. And the stubborn Afrikaans, you know, conservative <laughs> coaches yeah. and commentators, they, they get along together. Yeah, favorite, At so. least in my case, nobody liked me. <laughs> Right now, a guy like Johan Huesenau injured, he keeps getting injured in that, and Bill is such a you know a, a future star in the making. Did we he don't be able to come back? 10, yes, huh? I know. But do you think that a guy like that will come back <laughs> after all of this? Yeah, I really hope so. He's a, an exciting player, and uh, at his age, he's done some good performances. So we yeah. we need him back. And um, yeah, I just felt that we pushed him a bit too far, too too quickly. But Heineke was under pressure to to get find someone else for Mornay. Um, so, yeah, it's sad, but he's a good player. But no, Lambie has a great tour, has a blinder. People love, I mean, there's so many people calling for him a tent. So, Lambie has a great tour. It's great for our rugby, but no more. Yeah. And it's into the problem. Christian comes back. Yeah. Two great young talents. You know, is he going to start looking at pushing Lambie back to 15, then we're back at square one again? Seems like he, uh, he doesn't consider Lambie at Clive seriously. So, uh, mm. I don't know. I always believe that, or Heineke's belief is that. Um, if there's two players equally good, you always go for the bigger player. And the Bulls player. <laughs> Naturally. He always two said e- if two players are equal, I will go for the ball. <laughs> yes, I'll go for the ball. <laughs> uh, he said it's easier to um, make, a, to, you know, to, to, to make a, uh, a big player clever than to make a, a clever player big. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so now he always, and I think that's where Gil Aplon, Zayn Kirshner, that is typically what's, what's happening there. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I, I think he'll, he'll stick with Monet for a while, and, yeah, Horsen will be the next fly-off. Okay, there we go. Uh, and Tata's so is you, ma- man at number 15. Sorry, you think, you think that he's going to play Monet at 10 now in this end of year tour still? Or is he going to... Yeah, I surely, think, I mean, he's, he's got to have a look at Lambert. No, he's definitely going to experiment, but I think for the next 18 months or so, Monet is still going to be his first choice. What do you off. know, Craner? <laughs> I don't know. What exactly do but you know? I just know? think um, everyone wants to throw new players in and, and we just said we need consistency and a, and a core of experienced players so 
you know, now you want to get rid of that one as well. So No, no, we don't want to get rid of it. We love more now. I think he's, yeah. he's great. But, I mean, uh, there's such a demand to have a look at Patrick at yeah. 10 in the Springbok setup. So he's got an ideal opportunity to do that now. Yeah. And maybe bring more now off the bench. I must say, I, I don't really enjoy the Bulls game plan. I uh, When I coached the Falcons and we got the, the ex-Bulls players, you know, in the first six months you'd... <laughs> it just teaches guys to run the gaps and not yeah. into the opposition players. So, um, so the Bulls has got a game plan which I think um, Mornay fits it best and I don't know if Heineke is going to pursue that game plan or uh, stick with it. Hopefully we can go uh, play a more go-forward kind of game with a, with a fly of like Lambie or yeah. Person or uh, getting the ball on the advantage line. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it will be conservative for now. Okay. And then just out of interest, your, your first choice scrummy? Sure. <laughs> no, I, I actually think um, um, Jana van Mark is, is one of the best in the, in the country. Um, I, I must say that um, at the beginning of the year... <laughs> Take that sound bite, Will. <laughs> um, who's the other contenders? Ruan Pino? Yeah, Ruan. We need Ruan. I and actually Hoki. think they must just keep Ruan there and make him the kicker, you know, and just let him play the next 50 tests mm. and take the pressure off the fly-off and just let Ruan kick. Ochar, I think, is, um, yeah, I like him. So, I, wait, I, I tell you what, hold on. Take the pressure off the flower off, playing Ruan at nine. Yeah, yeah for obviously. the kicking, for the yeah, no, goal, so, uh, goal uh, kicking. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, stick with him. Yeah, I, I, so start yeah. him. Yeah, no, obviously. Yeah, no, I think he's, I think the, the, the best clearer behind the ruck is, uh, is Jano van Mark. I, I saw in the, in the Super 15 as well. I think he would have made a bigger impact for the Bulls ahead of um, Ochar. Yeah. But, I mean, they said that about US versus Johan Ru as well. I think uh, the flower, Joel and, and the guys that were playing flower, yeah. actually said they felt better or more comfortable playing with Johan. Because yeah. they kind of, um, I think his kicking game and also his, he, you kind of knew what you were going to get from him. Yeah. Whereas with Joost, they never quite knew what was going to happen. <laughs> and that's you with know? Ochart the same. Yeah. Oh, he's the same. So, I mean, the flowers, sometimes flowers feel more comfortable one scrum off than the other. I suppose you, what you're saying is Janet for Mark might be a bit, a more of a Johan Roo type guy where yes. your flower feel a bit yeah, more comfortable. Yeah. Versus Hoki, we don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, and Ruan yeah. also, I suppose. I, I don't know. Ochar had a big um, impact on the wing. And I, he I doesn't just, want to play there. Yeah, obviously, yeah, probably. Always want to play he says he'd rather bench it, and play scrum off and come yeah. off the bench oh. and play under Ruan than have yeah. to play on the wing. Okay. Yeah, Maybe he'll well, tell the coach that, though. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that might be a bit yeah. much. So now that the reserves get the same game for you, you don't mind. Exactly. Huh? Yeah, you'll <laughs> play, play anyway. 10 years longer. You'll play Lock if he has to. <laughs> yeah. No, I just think, um, it just frustrates me if, if Ruan is slow behind the ruck and, and when he scrapes the ball out with his foot, and he, I don't know, it could be the game plan as well where they want to set the forwards up and, you know, there isn't a rush. But, uh, yeah, I like a quick ball out. Um, but, yeah, I think the best player in the, in the last 10 years was Furida Pri, and I think we're feeling that. Yeah. I don't think anyone actually realized how good a player he was. Yeah. And, yeah, it's a big task to fill his boots again. 2000, I'll say, you actually say Furida was better than Eust? Um, no, after Eust. Eust was playing in 2002, 10 years ago. Oh, so in the last 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're just edged into that 10 years. Well, okay, you tell it's always going to be a better player than the previous one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, Krano, we thank you for your time and popping through today. There were some interesting things to say about rugby. And, uh, we'll I would have liked to be the first choice, not the stand-in. No, no. Well, look, you're welcome anytime, anytime. <laughs> that's we just, that's we what just, Lambie said. Well, we have a standard thing where we are exactly. I was actually tweeting yesterday. Someone says, does Lambie know where he stands with the coach? There's nobody knows, knows where exactly he sits. exactly where he sits. Yeah. Um, now, we, just, we have a thing with John. We instruct him, please, to not harass people too much. So, so we, we'll happily, uh, okay. when we, when we, maybe Vartok will come visit us there again. Okay, thank that's you. Close to where you live, right? Where do you live, by the way? No, in, yeah, in Pretoria. Okay, but, but Pretoria, I've discovered, home, is, is no, pretty but, big. But, uh, no, <laughs> no, yeah, no, we can drive quickly in Pretoria. <laughs> yeah. I've, uh, Try taking the Zambezi turn off this yeah. afternoon. Jeez, no, like. Right. I'm going back, so it's easy. Okay, cool. Maybe, maybe we'll to Clue if we'll get Johnny to tea. That's okay. our last one in about a month's time. Or okay. just at uh, the end of the month. End of this month. All right, well, there we go. Look at the time. Thanks, we passed 5 o'clock, Krano. Thanks, bye. Don't give me yet. No, pleasure. Thank you for joining us. Thanks a lot, Krano. Today.